Hello everyone. So in the last video, should Western Blacks punish Ghana, I discussed Ghana's discrimination against American and UK Blacks, as well as those others who are part of the diaspora who are from and live in other parts of the Western world. I simply asked a question. You should not be mad at the question. If you are mad at the question, then the real issue is that you're most likely embarrassed by the answer and you're upset because you're being called out about what it really is. So in the last video that was dropped, I spoke very specifically about issues within Ghana that revolve around Western blacks being discriminated against by being overcharged. Because most of you who watched it or who have not watched it did not see it in its entirety, I highlighted the example of how during the global shutdown, blacks who were traveling to Ghana from the US and UK were excessively overcharged. And let me be very clear, I highlighted the example of how those traveling from the Western world, primarily UK and the US, in particular the black people traveling, were excessively overcharged to take the same PCR test that were given to Ghanaians and West Africans for a lower price. We're not talking about different PCR tests. We're talking about the same exact PCR test. If you do not believe me, take a look at your screen because this is what is on and was on the Ghanaian embassy's website and me actually visiting Ghana at that time, I can tell you that there was a clear distinct difference because you had to pay for your test before you even boarded the plane. There were so many people who watched the last video and responded in the comments with their efforts to gaslight. And just so we're all on the same page, by gaslighting, I mean in a number of the comments, there were all these attempts to make it seem as though the discrimination many Western Blacks faced during that time and even now today, that somehow this doesn't exist. That somehow this narrative that I discussed in the last video is somehow a made up narrative. And those who actually did acknowledge and do acknowledge that yes, because you're from the West, you are overcharged, they tend to justify it. And the link to the, to the last video is actually gonna be in the description. And uh, if I can put it at the top of this video for you to click on it, it's also at the top of this video. So in this video, I just want to highlight some of those comments. A number of Ghanaians came to the platform and left. For those of you who are black, who are from the UK, the US, or what's considered to be the Western world, because there are other countries outside of the United States and the UK that are a part of the Western world, like Canada and, and Australia and in some other areas too. Listen to some of these comments that they left on the last video so you can see how some of these Ghanaians really feel about those of us from the West. And I want to preface this like I prefaced the last video. I am not in any way suggesting that you should not visit Ghana. We are a travel platform, Black Travelers Network. This is not designed to discourage people from going to Ghana. It's designed to, one, make people aware that it does exist. Two, to challenge the, the country of Ghana to be more fair in how they're assessing and charging people because it is price discrimination based on nationality. And so let's get into some of these comments. So the first comment is, we'll start making videos exposing the violent and coarse behavior of African-Americans too. This person then goes on to say, totally unnecessary topic. Besides, whether you decide to come back to visit or invest or relocate, we'll be all right with or without you. Would you like us Ghanaians or Africans to talk about our unpleasant experiences or encounters with your people? And so to this comment, I simply say, look, this is not a personal attack against the people of Ghana. I highlighted an unfair system, an unfair aspect of your Ghanaian system that 
is discriminatory based off of the nationality of, of a person and where we come from. And I identified a very specific example of where we're being overcharged. I'm not even talking about all of the permits and licenses and, you know, different document fees that Americans or those from the UK and other parts of the Western world are assessed that are higher cost than those who are of Ghanaian descent or those who are from West Africa. I'm not even talking about all of those, but that's a part of the discriminatory tactics. I've spoken to a number of uh, black Americans who are in Ghana, who have relocated there, who have indicated, yes, they are overcharged different, depending on, you know, what permit or what they need to pay for in order to run their business. They, the costs that are assessed to them are totally different than what's assessed to, uh, someone who, uh, is from the country. And so, this is not about whether or not you're going to go make negative content about African Americans, as you call it, because the reality is, is there's a ton of content out there about African Americans. So if, if you choose to do something along those lines, that's fine. That's up to you. But I have to say that this is not about the individual Ghanaian. It's just not. This is about a system that you guys have in place that your government has co-signed and implements. And that kind of mindset trickles down to the masses of people. There's this mindset that's created that it is okay to overcharge or excessively charge those of us from the West. That's what this is about. The other comment, you black Americans pump out more negativity about Ghana than any other foreign group at this point. How can you punish a country that does not need you? Ladies and gentlemen, please, please understand that my perspective, and I've always said this, I don't necessarily think Ghana or any other African country necessarily needs us. I, I don't think any of us feel like, oh, we got to go to Ghana because they need us. Like, no, <laughs> that's not what we think. That's not how we think. So to even say that it ain't like you guys really need us, we know that. You know, I personally feel the, the good people of Ghana are smart enough, more capable enough. You guys are um, creative enough to come up with your own solutions. You don't, ne you don't necessarily need us. You really don't. And so I'd advise you to share that mindset with your government officials who pour all of this money and all of these efforts in trying to get black Americans to come over. We've had all kinds of black American ce celebrities that have flown since the year of return, during the year of return, post the year of return, who have flown over there to Ghana to bring attention and publicity to the country to increase tourism, to increase how the world sees your country. So you can say you don't need us, but I would encourage you to share that mindset with those officials at the top who are making the, the decisions because their actions and their efforts say something totally different. And the other part of this comment that I just thought was completely weird is the fact that you, that this person says you black Americans pump out more negativity about Ghana than any other foreign group, which is a whole lie. <laughs> that is not true. Let's be very clear. Black Americans, we do not own and control any aspect of the world media, okay? We have media companies that we run here in the United States as well as different parts of the UK. But in terms of the global system as a whole, we do not own nor do we control any massive media company. So to somehow suggest that we're pumping out more negativity is a whole lie. But I'll tell you what we have pumped out. We have pumped out over $2 billion in the Ghanaian economy. That is a fact that is on record. We've pumped that out before the year of return, during the year of return, which we have clear receipts on that. 
And we have continued to pump that out post your return because your efforts in the country has now shifted from coming over to visit and tour Ghana to coming back over to invest in the country. So, so to somehow say we pump out negativity, nothing but negativity more than any other foreign group is not true. And you might want to check the receipts on what we're actually pumping out. The next comment, this is not a wise move to attract views. It's sad that this has to come from a black person. There are ways around price gouging. Even me, a Ghanaian diasporan, get charged more when they hear me speak. Ask any Borga and they'll substantiate what I'm saying. I don't mind supporting local businesses if ripping me off for some for, for some few CDs will make their day. I'll be happy to oblige so far as it's so far as it's not astronomical. Here's the thing. I want to be extra crystal clear on this, that when blacks from different parts of the African diaspora outside of Africa, what is deemed the Western world, when we come over to visit, we're not tripping or feeling any kind of way about being charged an extra 10, 15, 20 dollars for a trinket or an item that we buy in your markets. That is this is not about the vendors that we encounter on a daily basis if we're traveling about and throughout Ghana. This is not about them. This is about the system that your government is creating that makes it okay for them as the government to overcharge us. And that kind of mindset actually does trickle down to, to the everyday man or woman. Most of us here in the United States support small businesses, local businesses on some level. And we already know in doing that, that oftentimes when you're supporting smaller local businesses, sometimes the prices are going to be a little bit higher than maybe if you went to a larger corporation and bought the same item. We know that we get that. I want to be clear that the last video is not about putting down any local businessman or businesswoman who has a product or has a service and they're charging what they feel they need to charge or what they want to charge to feel motivated to be there and to make another sale. Like this is not about them. This is about the system that the country is creating that makes it abundantly clear that if you are American, or you are from the UK or from any other aspect of the Western world, you come to Ghana, you will be overcharged by the government. If you decide to do business, if you decide to enter the country during a time where, you know, you have to submit, uh, you know, proof of health, you know, they're going to charge you more. And I just think that that's just, it's, it's not right. It's, nothing less than discriminatory. Take a look at this comment. This gentleman says a whole lot of different things, but ultimately he ends by trying to issue some sort of threat by saying, keep making videos, throwing up words, coming after our nation, then we will handle you. I guess that's supposed to make me fearful, but it absolutely does not. We have to get to a place in our society and also just generally speaking in the diaspora i really feel like we have to get to a place where people are allowed and encouraged to ask critical questions of each other without somehow people feeling like oh this is a personal attack or oh we're sitting up here trying to throw dirt on the country that is not the case you know I come from obviously the American culture and it's a, it's just a cultural difference. You know, if I'm asking questions that are critical, I'm coming from a place because I really care. If I'm highlighting a problem and an issue that I see, 
I'm coming from a place because I, I really care and I want to see it improved because if you're trying to attract folks from the Western world to come and set up shop and live there or do business there, you know, these kind of things like discriminatory pricing is a big barrier to that level of success. It just is. And so because I use the term, which I stand by and I stick by the, the word discrimination, and you can look up the word discrimination because when I am describing this system, it is textbook discriminatory. Okay. It, plain as day. You can look at it online at the embassy's website. Okay. So I say that to say, you know, we have to get to a place where we're asking these hard questions. And one of the challenges and the things that turned me off about Ghana is being in Ghana for as many times and as often as I've visited, I've heard so many Ghanaians complaining. You complain about your government, you complain about your government officials and how they take the money and they're not doing anything with the money that's benefiting the people. And then I asked you, why don't you confront your government officials? And the first thing you say is, well, it's kind of like a parent child relationship. You know, we don't like it, but we still respect them as our leaders. What? <laughs> so then why are we wasting time complaining? Like, you know, it, it, that's the difference between cultures because at the end of the day i'm raising the issue online on this platform because i actually do care because i have travelers who uh, come to ghana uh, because i have travelers who have yet to come because i have travelers who visited some time ago who have expressed a desire in going back because they want to buy property. Some of these people want to buy it for investment purposes. And some of these people want to buy it because they ultimately want to retire right there in Ghana. Like I'm coming from a place of having experienced the country. This is not uh, from a place of trying to tear your country down. It's just not. Um, it, it, it might be a lot easier for me to, to do videos like this if I really didn't like the country, but I love the country. I've been there numerous times and I, but at the same time, I have to be honest about what it is that I've seen, what I've experienced and, um, just what I feel needs to be, to be done better because, you know, visiting and traveling about Accra is cool, but how has the country benefited to the tune of two billion dollars from your year of return but outside of accra you're dealing with dirt roads to drive up on as if this is the early 1900s it, it, it just doesn't make sense so yes i i am being critical and the threats don't work this other comment it's fact that the Chinese is rebuilding Ghana's infrastructure. Regardless of race, can you show me one major project built by Americans in Ghana, apart from providing Ghana arms to kill each other and create conflicts in the region? Please show me just one project, not those crap, uncomplicated scam buildings seen on YouTube. Here's the thing. I have multiple examples of Americans, black Americans specifically. I don't know too many non-black Americans who come to Ghana, um, but I know most, I have multiple examples of black Americans who have come from America and who set up shop and rebuilt neighborhoods, built businesses over there in Ghana. Our, our last uh, visit to Ghana, uh, we met a sister from the United States who has two locations, two spa locations right there in Ghana. I personally know two gentlemen who are, are from uh, the New York and North Carolina area from uh, here in the United States who have a hotel that they've been building up over the years. We've stayed in the hotel many years ago. I also know of a brother out there who has 
built over a hundred homes. He's at, this brother's out of Chicago, who's built over a hundred homes in Ghana. One of two of the first people that I met when I came to Ghana, two of the first Black Americans were Black Americans out of D.C. An older, a older couple who had, uh, who was developing one of the the smaller islands, uh, and some of the travelers actually went over to uh, spend the day on the island that they're developing. So we're not. At, we're not even talking about all the people. You know, there are a number of Black Americans who've come there. Also, Luca Health. Look up Luca Health. Uh, it's a it's a, um, a a medical facility that was built by a sister out of Los Angeles, California, uh, and it's ran by a brother from the United States. It's called Luca Health. It's right there in Accra. That is a project also. So to sit up here and be, be say, well, name one project. Well, look, I got multiple people. <laughs> you know, like we take people to Ghana actively to the African con continent actively. We've had people traveling there over the the past several years. So to somehow even ask, I'm, I'm shocked you even asked for one project because the thing is, is there are numerous examples. There are a lot of black Americans who have moved over there, relocated some permanently, some temporarily, but people are there, they've relocated and many of them do businesses. We're not even talking about the farms. Some of them have started the other types of businesses they've created. So yeah, we got examples. I want to close by saying this, you know, first of all, all of you who took the time to write a comment, even if it was negative, I want to thank you for participating in the conversation because we don't have to agree and we don't even have to like what the other person has to say or their perspective. But at the end of the day, this is a conversation that I believe needs to be had. We encourage those of you who are in the diaspora to visit Ghana and formulate your own opinion about it. I personally have had really great experiences traveling to Ghana on the ground, um, being in the country. Uh, I'm very disappointed in how so many of the government officials have handled the resources that have been entrusted to them because I do feel like when you go to different parts of, of the country, you can clearly see that those resources are lacking in some areas and it, they need to like really take stock on how they're distributing the resources, who's actually getting them and what projects are actually being prioritized. And so I say that to say that if you are living in Ghana as, and you're from the Western world, if you decide to visit Ghana, you have afforded yourself the opportunity to be as thoughtful and as critical, both constructive criticism, as well as if you have a negative experience, you're more than encouraged to share that perspective. Do not allow anyone, regardless of the country that they are from, tell you that what you have to say or what you have experienced is not true or you shouldn't feel that way or you shouldn't highlight it. That is where I have to draw the line and so, all of you who have dropped comments trying to gaslight, let me just be very clear. I'm speaking to specific things that are happening in Ghana based on what I've experienced, based on what our travelers have experienced. And honestly, based off of the criticism that a number of people will not get on the, the internet and do a video about, okay? So just, be mindful of that. This is not to tear you down. Uh, this is not to deter people from visiting Ghana. I visited several African countries. I, many of our travelers have visited several African countries. And so we can compare experiences as well. But I will say the great thing about Ghana is that you guys are leading in so many areas on the continent in terms of your your thoughtfulness, your creativity, and your willingness to um, be innovative in getting and gaining resources for your country. And so I just 
say that to say this is not designed to demonize you. Um, this is not designed to, to uh, put you down or deter anybody from visiting. It is a critical perspective designed to encourage you and your government to do better. With that being said, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time.